This is the pre-build preparation for the real grade RX-78-2 Gundam. When customizing your Gunpla, you're going to be working with things like model glues, various types of paints, and also solvents like paint thinner or isopropyl alcohol are the two most common ones. You want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated room because you don't want to be uh, inhaling the fumes because they could cause health issues or at the very least make you feel intoxicated. You're going to want to read any warning labels on any products that you use or do some research online to see if there's additional health uh, safety measures you need to take such as respiratory gear or anything such like that. If you are working with isopropyl alcohol, do keep in mind that that is a wood alcohol, which can cause serious health issues, including blindness if consumed. So you want to make sure that you definitely wash your hands after any exposure to it to make sure that you don't get it in your food later on. Okay, it's going to be time to do the panel lining, and once again, like I normally do, I'll be doing a majority of the panel lining while the pieces are on the runners because it just makes it easier. Now, this being a real grade kit, there's going to be a lot more underside detail than you would get like on an HG or such. So just keep that in mind if you're going to do panel lining to always look on both sides because there's going to be a lot more that needs to be done on the bottom of the pieces or the pieces that don't normally have detail on them. So what I'll be doing is I'll use it, be using my standard colors here. Um, I've got my dark gray from my white pieces. Haven't quite figured out whether I'll use the dark gray or the black on these slightly darker, like, you know, these light gray pieces or not. I'll, I'll test the dark gray to see what it looks like. Because so I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of places where the white and the light gray come together. So if I can use the panel lines the same color, that might be better in the long run on the overall look. I've got my dark brown for the red pieces, and this is a slightly darker red than is typically on a Gundam, then uh, I think that's going to look really nice on there. And every other color, except for the dark gray, will be black. And for the dark these ones here, which is a dark gray, not quite black. I don't know what I'm going to use. I don't know if I'll use gray or if I'll use light gray, because essentially I just want to emphasize where the panels are. So I'll test these, because I think black is going to be too dark and it won't show. So let's just get right on into this. <laughs>
Okay, I finished all the panel lines, and now it's time to clean up. But before I do that, I just wanted to uh, give an update on what I was going to try to do with the darker plastic. I was going to try panel lining it with the lighter gray, thinking that it would kind of highlight the dark plastic, give it a little bit of contrast to kind of bring out any kind of lining or anything like that in it. Unfortunately, it didn't look very good at all. Uh, it just looked very messy and, and just not at all pleasant to look at. So what I did is I just cleaned up everything and just, you know, decided not to panel line those at all. So I just wanted to let you guys know that before I move forward with the cleanup, just in case you were wondering what was happening with that. So let's get right on into this.
now that I've got all the panel lining done and the pieces cleaned up, it's now time to start removing the pieces from the runners themselves. So I've got my runners all, all organized, got our manual, I've got my case that I'm going to be putting the pieces in by part as I take them off the runners. Now one thing with this is there are some color correcting stickers on this, even though it is a real grade. Like for the shiny parts, the, the gold the gold and the bronze here, um, or might be more of a copper. Now some of them, I did get the, uh, the uh, Bandai water slide stickers or decals for this. And some of the silver, what happens here is some of the very tiny little dots on the model are got the silver on here. So it has some of those reproduced on here, but it's more of a gray than a silver. And I have a feeling probably underneath here are the gold and copper. But once again, they're not really shiny. They're just kind of the color. So I do have some uh, metal, uh, metallic, I'm sorry, metallic acrylic uh, markers that I might use instead. So and some, some of the uh, the silver is actually inside some of the decals themselves which they have here so I might split them apart and still use the the silver um, or the chrome marker instead just to give the shininess but the rest of these uh, on on here are going to be done with the water slide instead so probably the only ones that I'll actually use from this is the actual eyes and, and for the for them right there so let's just get right on into this
Now I'm going to do the painting for the color correction. And the only colors I'm going to do are the metallic gold and this copper. Well, I guess it's more of a copper than a bronze. But So I've got two uh, acrylic markers that I'm going to be using. One is a Despe, the metallic gold. And then this is from a new set of markers that I got, the Arctix. And this is, I, I did some matching. If you can tell, I did little marks on the, the stickers there just to get some matching. And this match closest to the copper color. So there's only six pieces that I need to do. These right here, these yellow ones is going to be the gold color and everything else is going to be the copper color. And it's basically just some highlighting a couple places. So I'll just be using these real quick to do these. So. These are probably going to take a couple of coats, especially on the darker ones. But it's, it's going to look a lot better than putting the stickers on. Especially since the stickers will only cover the tops of these vents. And with the markers I can get underneath as well and the sides and the fronts of the vents as well. So the entire little louver here will be the correct color as opposed to just the top that the, the sticker will do. And I gotta say I really really like especially the desk bay. Any marker if you're gonna get them you know, as opposed to, you know, painting it. Try to get something that has this type of tip, which is kind of like a, a calligraphy pen tip, or, or you can think of it as a Japanese calligraphy pen tip, because it just gets so much nicer and gives you much more flexibility on what you need to do and how you control where the paint goes and stuff like that. And essentially, these markers are just filled with acrylic paint. And the desk bay, I mean, I've used the desk bay ones on a lot of models, and they work really, really well. I like the finish that it gives. And then just like any other acrylic, you would just do like a, a top coat. I tend to use a matte top coat. But you could do a gloss as well, and it'll protect the paint. Now, one thing to keep in mind also, if you're going to be putting water slide decals on, you might want to do a top coat before you do. If you have, if you have any painted areas where you are going to be putting a decal, then you definitely want to do some coating, you know, a top coat to, to protect it because the water slide decal will not damage it and the I use both the um, setter and the softener. The setter, which is the blue part, you know, the pre-apply for the decal, that won't do anything to the paint, but I noticed that at times, depending, might depend on whether I'm using, you know, the type of acrylic paint and what the base is. I haven't quite figured out what it is, but I've noticed at times that the, the softener that you put on to after the decal has been applied can affect the acrylic paint. But in this case, none of these areas that I'm painting are going to have decals on them, so I don't need to worry about that, but I just wanted to mention that. And see, this has two different types of tips. It has the brush tip, but it also has like what, what it calls a fine tip, but the brush tip is much finer. So I just prefer to use this for everything. Need this, I'm just the stickers just go right on the tips of these right here. So I'm just I'm 
And this is really, really nice. This applies for amazingly. That's nice. I may not even need two coats. It looks really nice on just the first coat. I'll see how it dries. I like that. And then copper will also go on this. It's just the these raised parts here. There's a couple there's some raised bits here that we just need to These Artex, A R R T X, very nice. Got a whole set of like eighteen marker and their markers, and they're all metallic, which is nice because it there's you don't get a lot of variety of colors on other metallic sets, and this one has a whole bunch different shades of green, different shades of blue. They're just really, really nice. So if they, if they all apply like this, then man, it was a good investment. Well, it, it, I think it was like 20 bucks for the 18 of them. So that's, you know, not a huge investment, but it's nice to know that it's going to work okay. <laughs> Oops. Maybe I don't have to worry about second coat on this. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. And most of it's going to be hidden, so I don't need to worry about cleanup. So yeah, so I'm just going to let those dry, and then the color correcting will be done, and then be ready to build once those are dry. So I'll see you for the build. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel. And if you would like to see more like this, please go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell. If you do have some time, I would really appreciate it if you could watch one of the videos that are popping up around my head.